that she's so sorry about what happened. And that guy was her husband, but he divorced her. She says how he was extremely controlling because he's much older than her, blah, blah, blah. He put his hands on her, yada, yada. She says, anyway, you don't want to hear that. Can you push me out? I hopped in my car and I peeled off right past her, leaving her stuck there in the snow. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email. Guys, if you want to send in an email, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. You guys read the title? Let's get into it. So... Ex-wife regrets cheating on her husband. Huh. Mm, let's see what this is about. Hello, true story. I hope you find this story worthwhile. I just subbed to your channel in July and have been listening off and on. Really great platform you have here. I will say I enjoy all of your stories. Whether the guy got ultimate revenge whether the guy got ultimate revenge or just little petty revenge like myself or the guys that bumped their heads a few times and then finally woke up and moved on. My story is about how I met a girl on my birthday and she lied and deceived me, tried to cheat on her husband with me and nearly got me taken out. And I mean it. I did get that last laugh when she later needed my help. Oh, wow. See? I met this girl in late 2019, November 12th to be exact. We met at a comedy show with comedian Mike Epps here in Indiana. We both were there by ourselves and they sat us next to each other. Once we entered, they chose to sit certain people in specific spots in the area that your ticket designated. Some people were sad in other places. I believe this is to be a strategic move for the comedians. Mike picked on specific people in the crowd, but it was a fun night. So this girl sat right next to me. I remember thinking, wow, she is gorgeous. A biracial woman with long hair. She is gorgeous. After the second opening comedian finished, her and I were talking. I was asking her if she was there alone. Or did they move whoever she came with to another area? She said, no, I'm by myself. What about you? I said the same, that I was here alone. She said, well, I'm glad that they sat me next to you. You're very handsome. Oops, I'm so sorry. Do you have a girlfriend? She was asking. I said, absolutely not. I handed her my cell phone to put her number in. She did. And we enjoyed the rest of the show. Right after the show, we were talking in the hallway. She said, we should hang out here at the strip mall. I said, absolutely. I was hungry, and she said she was starving. We headed over to the Cheesecake Factory. Once we get inside, there's a guy looking at us at the welcoming desk with big wide eyes. I look at her, and her head is down. I look back at him, and he's shaking his head as if he's thinking, this sneaky bee. I ask her, do you know him? She says, yes, it's her ex-boyfriend's friend, but don't worry about it. We get up to speak to someone else at the welcoming desk, and this guy is just looking at her. I said, uh, is there a problem, sir? The guy says, nah, it's all good. Y'all enjoyed dinner tonight. I look at her, and she acts as if she didn't even hear me and the guy speaking. Anyway, we get seated, and I try to enjoy our meal. Halfway through eating, she's frantic on her phone, texting. I said, are you okay? She says, we need to go now. I said, what? I'm not done. She says, please, we can head over to my friend's house. 
but we have to go. I finally get the check and take home bags and we go. On the way out, that same guy that was staring at us said, "Uh uh-huh, I told him, your butt is busted. As we were walking back to the parking garage, I stopped and I said, wait, what the F was he talking about? Look, if you got a boyfriend, I'm cool on you. She pulled out cash and handed me 30 bucks and apologized. She then says, I'm married. I said, what the F? Married? What's wrong with you? She apologized and said, my husband is on his way. And if he and if he catches you, he will off you. He's tried it before. Uh, what? Tried to off someone? She says, yes, but he got off with it. Self-defense. What a effing night. By the way, guys, this was my birthday night. I decided to treat myself to a night of laughs at a comedy show, but it didn't go that way. As soon as I tell her, you need to get the F away from me, you hear someone honking their horn and speeding behind us. We're on a sidewalk and there's one and there's a one way road. A big old Dodge Ram is speeding towards us with bright lights on. This mother effer pulled up on the sidewalk. Hops out with the 38 and says, who the F is this? She's crying and screaming. I just met him at the show and he wanted some food. So I joined him. This man points the, this man points the weapon at me. You F in my B. I said, dude, F no. I just met this woman, bro. I swear. He puts the weapon down and tells me, and guys, I will not make this up. This man actually said this. If I find out you F my wife. I will find you and F you. <laughs> Yo, no way. If I find out you f my wife, I will find you and F you in the behind before I put a bullet in your head. I said, sir, please just let me go, please. I'm 25 today, guys. At the time, I had just turned 22. This guy looked like he was at least 40. Bald head with a big beard. Sort of looked like Jim Brown a little bit. He grabbed her by her hair and walked her to the passenger side. She jumped in and I darn near leaked myself. Man, I couldn't even move. I was effing terrified. He jumped in his car and peeled off. But I dropped my bag of food and I took off to the parking garage. I got home. I never called the police or anything. I was just glad I made it out alive. I didn't bother looking at his plates. I didn't give a crap. I just wanted to get home. Over a year later, in February, it's a freaking blizzard here, but I was starving and Speedway gas stations was the only thing open. I made it there and grabbed a bunch of crap as I had no food at home and cases of water. Once I got everything, I see a Nissan Maxima stuck in the snow leaving Speedway. I pull up to the car. The front of my car was near the rear of the Nissan. I hop out and I ask, Through the window. Hey, can I help you push you? The woman rolls down the window and it's her guys. The same woman from that night on my birthday. It's effing her dude. She says, oh my gosh. Hey, how are you? How have you been? My thoughts was to get the F out of here before her husband comes. She proceeds to tell me that she's so sorry about what happened. And that guy was her husband but he divorced her. She says how he was extremely controlling because he's much older than her, blah, blah, blah. He put his hands on her, yada, yada. She says, anyway, you don't want to hear that. Can you push me out? I said, yeah, sure. I'm walking back and I swear a ghost slapped me silly and said, what the F are you doing? Get in your car and leave. I hopped in my car and I peeled off right past her, leaving her stuck there in the snow. I didn't think of it as any kind of get back or revenge, but more so I'm protecting myself and well-being. I don't want anything to do with that woman. I saw it in that dude's eyes that night. He would have easily squeezed that trigger on me with no hesitation. These 304s are pathetic, married, and going out with other men. I felt to tell you that we talked about sex on our way to to the Cheesecake Factory. She was saying how long it's been for her. 
and she's really and she really needs it. I just thought it was going to be a lucky birthday night for me. Definitely did turn out to be a night to remember. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, well, you'll never forget that night. You'll never forget that birthday night, man. Oh, I'm glad he didn't do anything to you. This guy's this guy sounds nuts. He sounds it sounds like some older guy tried to get with some younger girl who was a 304 and not that because her age and made her 304 304 is coming all ages, shapes and sizes. Look, man. I get it. You're having a good night. You're by yourself. You know, I'm the type of person that do stuff like that. I'll go to a comedy show by myself. I do things a lot by myself, but you're out. It's your birthday. You're enjoying yourself. You see this gorgeous woman. You get her number. She wants to hang out. Then towards the end, you start to mention how you guys, she discussed getting it in with you. This woman definitely was trying to cheat on her husband. I mean, I'm glad she gave you some money back for dinner. I don't know how much it was, but you said she gave you 30 bucks. Look, man, she was trying to do something and she almost got you caught up. In this case, I can't necessarily blame you. Because a lot of times I'll say, guys, don't mess with married women. Don't mess with a woman if she got him. You didn't know. She's flat out told you she didn't have anybody or did she? I don't think you mentioned if you asked or not, but I think you assume because she's asking you, do you have a girlfriend? You said no. You exchanged numbers. I think it's assumed that everybody's single here, but uh, it's probably not good to assume, you know? You know, I guess when that guy, when that guy, <laughs> when you saw that guy at the, uh, at the desk, when you went into the uh, Cheesecake Factory, I thought that was her boyfriend. And she was just playing it off or something. But that sounds like that was the guy's friend or something or somebody he knew. Man, when you left and she said, or the, and the guy said, uh-huh, I told him, you're busted. It was, you should have, you should have went your separate ways. Look, out, look, I'm out. I'm gone. I know, I bet you had a gut feeling at that time. I guarantee you, you did. Man, guys, this was a this was crazy. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Let's check out another story. Can I remarry my spouse if I committed adultery? <laughs> I am in the process of divorcing my spouse because I committed adultery. I don't want to, and I am fully accountable of my actions, and I feel that it is only fair to him to get this divorce. My husband doesn't want to flat out say that we have no chance in the future of possibly remarrying. I know he has the right to remarry, but I do. But do I? From my understanding, I do not have the right to marry another. But can I remarry him? According to the Bible, it's not clear to me. I really want to fix my marriage, though, but I feel I am doing it all wrong. I want to fix this marriage. My husband, 31, and I, 30, have been together since we were 14. Married for six years. Throughout our relationship, I struggled with severe insecurities. Always complaining about my looks. Always feeling lesser than my husband intellectually and just overall. My husband would tell me how I was beautiful, but for whatever reason, it never meant much and I almost didn't believe him. Like if I just was never enough. Till this day, I struggle with understanding why I was like this. I know this was always exhausting for him. One reason I believe I had hard times believing it is because he also would constantly point out things I would do wrong. So I always felt inferior and I'm thinking that it made believing other comments a bit difficult. My husband is very intelligent and has very high expectations of those he loves, but he can be very blunt and I have been a overly sensitive person over the years. Another issue, issue for me, was that I always wanted my husband to do a bit more in the relationship. Since the start of our relationship, I always paid for things. I was the only one who drove us everywhere, 
In high school and college, I would push us to study and do homework, many times myself being the one who did it. I wanted him to get a job because I really wanted us to start saving money to get married. I was working. I never felt that he put much effort into those things. Not that he didn't want to, but he just didn't care too much to do so. I hope I don't sound too pushy, but I just was raised to be very hardworking. My husband always was more into playing video games, like a lot. This is all just to give some context to before I was unfaithful. Uh, this is your way of trying to make him look bad, trying to trying to justify why you cheated. Mm, it's ridiculous. But to be fair to him, he is the most intelligent, creative, and loving person I have ever met. But I feel that he didn't think very highly of me, and I was more on the dry side and not super into everything he was into. He's a very tech savvy and hands-on person. So with that being said, about seven years into our relationship, not married, I began to develop feelings for a co-worker, and it eventually got physical. My husband, boyfriend at the time, found it in a very traumatic way. It was a very bumpy road, but he was willing to give things a try. I was remorseful and grateful. I did whatever was needed to, to do to be open, tracking apps, etc. It was very difficult for him to heal. We eventually decided to get married, but I felt he did it because we were each other's first. And that's exactly why I believed he felt obligated. The first years were rough. He would have constantly accuse me of being on my phone while we slept. I never was or getting out of bed in the middle of the night and be up to no good. I never was. I stayed faithful, and he was still incredibly hurt. He even put a camera in our room to see if I was lying about it. I was more than willing to do this. He would rage because he was sure I was lying. He would threaten me to tell my family that I cheated. I'd cry and beg. He got, he got a bit physical here and there. I even tied my hands at night at one point, to prove that I wasn't on my phone or lying. Sometime later, we decided to have kids. I will never forget how one time after having our first son, who is identical to him, he told me how he questioned if it was his son. This hurt. My husband barely helped me with our son or the house, and I was always afraid to ask before I didn't want to upset him. I would be the one who mainly did everything. Until this day, it's that way. The whole family knew I did it all. Then we had our second son, and by now, I was very fed up. I began to develop resentment because I felt he was taking advantage that I hurt him. Whenever I would bring up how I wanted more help, he would bring it up against me. Then about seven years after I cheated, a close friend of ours began to tell us about his marital issues. I was in shock because this was, this was a couple that I thought was so perfect. I never imagined they were in trouble. He would tell us how he would do it all. She was a stay-at-home mom. He would work long hours and come home to make chores and took it upon himself to do, to do all of them. To, like a, to make a long story short, I began to see myself in his shoes and I was going through a similar issue. This eventually led to an emotional affair that lasted a week until my husband found out uh, again. I was angry at the time, not because I got caught, but because of how much resentment I built up. Many times I mentioned my frustrations and he would always bring up my actions against him, saying that I should be grateful he was even with me. It's been over a year since the second time, and I want to make things right. I regret not being more patient and understanding of, this, of his pain. He has since then moved out with two co-workers, one of which is a female whom he has expressed to her he has feelings for her. She's the office flirt. He takes her to work, meaning he actually puts effort to drive now. Mind you, when I was pregnant, I would tell him how I really want him to drive out of safety reasons, but he would always say, what if you were alone? <laughs> Anyhow, I want to fix my marriage, but he says we are no longer in a relationship, yet he still tries to sleep with me as he does not want to please himself. He also stays at the house whenever he wants to without notice. So him moving out is an on and off thing. He talks about our financial future 
and has even said having more kids wouldn't be a problem, as we already have kids anyway. Yet he continues to speak to this woman regularly. She flirts back. I'm confused and want to know how to show him I'm serious about making changes and working things out properly. I'm telling myself he is doing all this out of him being hurt. Please help me. I feel that I have no say in the matter, but he is most definitely in an emotional affair. How do I handle this? He even admitted to me if we are to reconcile, him cutting communications with this woman is not a lot to ask for and is understandable. But yet he continues to do so, despite him knowing that it's best not to if we want to reconcile. He keeps saying that he is unsure if he actually wants to reconcile, but he continues to want to sleep with me, make future plans together, etc. I know that you reap what you sow, and this is only happening because of my part, past actions, but I have been trying my best to show that I am a safe and honest partner. I bite my tongue a lot. We all work together in the same office, but the inconsistencies are becoming a little bit too much. How do I handle this? Do I let him do as he pleases until he decides he wants to come back? I've tried to set boundaries, but she doesn't seem to want to respect them. He'll still have, he still has mentioned that he hasn't thought of divorce in several months. The story is much more complicated. But long story short, he actually moved out of the house back in August with this woman and another roommate. But since November, he has been living with me and has not gone back to that apartment. But he wants to continue to have communication with her. And it's very obvious in the way associated at work that the feelings are mutual. I think he is only in the house because it's more comfortable for him. We have, we have kids together. The other roommate that they lease with happens to be her ex-boyfriend. Yeah, this is all a very odd situation. <laughs> what? Yes, this is a very, very odd situation. I mean, you said it. You said it, though. You reap what you sow. You cheated on this man twice. I don't know why he forgave you. This is why you can't forgive. He's never going to forget. He's never going to trust you. You're going to you're going to look down you're going to look down on him even more after you, after he forgives you for cheating. And the proof is you cheated on him again. You know you can get away with it. You can just keep cheating. Every time you feel like he doesn't do something that you like, you're just you're just going to cheat on him. He's not going to leave anyway. The only reason you're upset now is because he has another woman, another another woman he can potentially be with. You hate that. That's burning inside. You don't like that. You want him to keep running back to you. You cheat because, hey, it's supposed to be happy wife, happy life. It's supposed to be happy wife, happy life. If he's not providing me happiness, then I get to cheat on him. That's how you feel. Ridiculous. Let's check out another story. I cheated, then ghosted my ex-boyfriend, and it's eating me up. Mm, mm, mm. I, 19-year-old female, met my ex-boyfriend, 22-year-old male, via Tinder. I was swiping and talking to guys out of boredom, not really looking for anything. That's when I met him. First, I didn't give him much thought besides being impressed by his pickup line. However, after talking for a while, we found out we actually had much more in common than I thought and agreed to go out with him on a few dates which all ended up being some, some unique experiences, to say the least. And whelp, one thing led to another, and we ended up falling in love. Now the thing is, we both knew it was going to end. He was studying abroad, and was only in the country due to the pandemic forcing institutions to convert into an online format. Despite this, we were still pretty serious about our relationship. We met each other's families, and I was getting along incredibly well with his mother. I was spending almost every day at his place, and he was loved by my entire family, especially my sister, who hated all my, all of my other boyfriends before him. We would play video games together and geek out about the same hobbies. We were like a match made in heaven. Now, the problem starts when I 
went on a seaside trip with some friends and family where I met C, 19-year-old male at the time, brought by a friend. The friend group was questionable, and I did drop them after realizing that, which was one of the reasons he refused to join, plus the location we picked. I found C to be a nice guy. We did share some interests and keep a conversation going. Me and C ended up becoming pals and hanging out to discuss potential projects during hangouts. Friend J, 19-year-old female, would have at her place. He was really into repairing things, and I was into old consoles. You can see the idea. During one of such hangouts, I made a fatal mistake of high oversharing and inventing to see about how, how heartbroken I was that my boyfriend was going to leave in two weeks. Mm, now you did that on purpose. <laughs> you knew what you were doing. The reason this was a mistake was that as it later turned out, C had developed a thing for me and took this as a green light to his hopes. Fast forward the two weeks. After spending the last day with boyfriend and his family at his local, at a local mall and him telling me at his place that the first thing he'll do when he gets back home is be at my door. I broke down. I felt like I lost the love of my life. Despite us talking through messages, I felt lost. Being the dumb teenager that I was then, I ended up getting high way more than I should have to cope with my feelings. The meetups at Jay's were no different. I was, in con I was in constant haze and would try to keep myself intoxicated to not think about the breakup. Again, I was an idiot. C was not helping much either, only feeding into my habits, and like the dumb idiot that I was, mistook this for being there for me, and so ended up trusting him. This all culminated when I had J, C, and another buddy over for some company while my parents were away. We were smoking and watching some stuff, overall just chilling. When C was asking me to come in a separate room to tell me that he had an extra forbidden cig that we could share, and being dumb and high, I accepted it despite being at my limit. That's when he started asking me really personal questions and being extremely touchy. I couldn't move. I was letting him I was letting it happen. I was so intoxicated that I couldn't even let out words, just mumbles. After that, he told me how much he'd waited for this. How happy he was that it finally happened. I could not I could only cry. I felt horrible. I cheated on my boyfriend. I was so ashamed. After I promised him that I would wait for him no matter how long it takes for him to get back, I cheated on him not even a month after he left. I was too ashamed to even open our conversation. I knew I couldn't have had the same energy I had prior to this, and I was scared he would notice this and start asking me stuff. And so, I ghosted him. I ghosted the man who helped me heal, who showed me that it was worth pursue my passions all because i was a dumb teenager and by the time i was finally doing slightly better and wanted to come clean about everything he unadded me everywhere it's been a year and a bit since the incident the guilt is still eating me up i know i am in the i know i am in the wrong for letting it happen and for ghosting him to top it all off if you happen to stumble upon this somehow i'm sorry I know you probably hate me for leaving you like that, confused and worried. I still think about you and I do miss you. You probably found someone now. I'm sure she's wonderful and is one lucky girl. Maybe we'll meet again in the next life. Sorry for the length. I got too carried away. <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid girl. You did my boy a favor. Here you are getting high, getting drunk, hanging out. And guys, don't buy the whole, she said, well, when I met C, I told him how sad I was that my boyfriend was going to leave in two weeks. Guys, she did that on purpose. She knew what she was doing. In case he likes me. I want to let him know that my boyfriend will be gone in two weeks so we can uh, 
start pursuing something now. It was all a plan to sleep with this guy, see? If she truly did regret it, maybe, maybe the bedroom action was trash to her. He didn't enjoy it. Whatever the case, you did my boy a favor. You ghosted him because you were too much of a coward. Like I say, guys, they're cowards. You were too petty to tell him anything. He got the point. He said, okay, well, she, hey, we were just we just hung out for that time. I had a good time, whatever. It's over. And he moved on with his life and blocked her on everything. He did the right thing. Salute to that guy. Salute to your ex-boyfriend. He did the right thing. I hope you don't come crawling back. And you know good and well, if you guys were to meet again, you're not even going to keep it real. You're going to make up something stupid. Oh, I was afraid because or I was just sad that you left and I just didn't know how to handle it. You'll never bring up that you slept with this other guy. See, ever leave that man alone and leave every other man alone that you're going to be. If you're going to be just hanging out with friends, smoking, getting high, drinking, just stay out of relationships because you're going to keep doing dumb stuff and you're going to blame it on the alcohol and you're going to blame it on the on, on the, the smoking. It's stupid. Let's check out these comments. Maybe we will meet again in the next in the next life. Yeah, don't meet him in this life. Someone said doubt there will be a chance anyways. It is for the best to remain strangers. Now, this sounds like you were violated, though. Your previous post makes this all sound made up. It sounds like you're going through a really tough time. And are feeling a lot of guilt and shame about what happened. It's understandable that you would feel this way, as cheating and ghosting someone can be very hurtful actions. However, it's important to remember that we all make mistakes, and it's never too late to try and make things right. It may be hard, but it might be worth reaching out to your ex and apologizing for what you did. No, 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 no. Nope, leave him alone. I do wish so much to make amends with him, she said. This is OP. Even though I know there is no reason we would get back together, I am sure he is doing great now. If he found someone else, but I don't see any chance I could reach out to him, sadly. You are fooling around and eaten up by your own morality. Either you own it, e either you own it and set it straight or leave and let the cycle continue. And it will continue until you realize you should stop feeling sorry for yourself when it's your actions or lack thereof that led to this. Mm, 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 mm. Shout, shout out to her ex-boyfriend. He did the right thing by leaving. Guys, guys, let me know what you think about both stories in the comments. I'm going to catch you guys at the next one.